Saint Augustine commentary on Psalm 44. This psalm is addressed to the sons of Koah, as its title shows. Now, Koah is equivalent to the word boldness, and we find in the Gospel that our Lord Jesus Christ was crucified in the place of a skull. It is clear then that this psalm is sung to the sons of his passion. Now we have on this point a most certain and most evident testimony from the Apostle Paul, because that at the time when the Church was suffering under the persecutions of the Gentiles, he quoted from hence a verse to insert by way of consolation and encouragement to patience. For that which he inserted in his epistle is said here, For your sake are we killed all the day long, we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Romans 8.36 Let us then hear in this psalm the voice of the martyrs, and see how good is the cause which the voice of the martyrs pleads, saying, For your sake. The title then is not simply to the sons of Koah, but for understanding to the sons of Koah. This is the case also with that psalm, the first verse of which the Lord himself uttered on the cross, My God, my God, look upon me, why have you forsaken me? For transferring us in a figure. 1 Corinthians 4.6 to what he was saying and to his own body, for we are also his body and he is our head. He uttered from the cross not his own cry but ours, for God never forsook him, nor did he himself ever depart from the Father. But it was in behalf of us that he spoke this, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? For there follows, far from my health, are the words of my offenses. And it shows in whose person he, he said this, for sin could not be found in him. O God, we have heard with our ears, our fathers have told us the work that you did in their days and in the days of old. Verse 1. Wondering wherefore, in these days, he has seemingly forsaken those whom it was his will to exercise in sufferings. They recall the past events which they have heard, which they have heard of from their fathers, as if they said, It is not of these things that we suffer, that our fathers told us. For in that other psalm also he said this, Our fathers trusted in you, they trusted and thou delivered them. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and the outcast of the people. They trusted and thou delivered them. Have I then hoped and have you forsaken me? And have I believed upon you in vain? And is it in vain that my name has been written in your book, and your name has been inscribed on me? What our fathers told us was this. Your hand destroyed the nations, and you planted them. Thou weakened the peoples, and cast them out. Verse 2. That is to say, you drove out the peoples from their own land, that you might bring them in and plant them, and might by your mercy establish their kingdom. These are the things that we heard from our fathers. But perhaps it was because they were brave, were men of battle, were invincible, were well disciplined and warlike, that they could do these things. Far from it. This is not what our fathers told us. This is not what is contained in Scripture. But what does it say? But what follows? 
for they got not the land in possession by their own sword, neither did their own arm save them. But your right hand and thine arm and the light of your countenance. Verse 3. Your right hand, your right hand is your power. Thine arm is your son himself. And the light of your countenance. What means this but that you were present with them in miracles of such a sort that your presence was perceived. For when God's presence with us appears by any miracle, do we see his face with our own eyes? No. It is by the effect of the miracle he intimates to man his presence. In fact, what do all persons say? who express wonder at facts of this description, I saw God present. But your right hand and your arm and the light of your countenance, because you pleased in them, i.e., so dealt with them that you were well pleasing in them, that who that whoso considered how they were being dealt with might say that God is with them of a truth, and it is God that moves them. What? Was he then other than now he is? Away with the, with the supposition. For what follows? You are changed. You are yourself my king and my God. Verse 4. You are yourself, for you are not changed. I see that the times are changed, but the creator of time is unchanged. You are yourself my king and my God. You are wont to guide me, to govern me, to save me. You who commandest salvation unto Jacob. What is you who commandest? Even thou in your own proper substance and nature, in which you are whatsoever you are, you were hid from them, and though you did not converse with the fathers in that which you are in yourself, so that they could see you face to face, yet by any created being whatsoever, thou commandest salvation unto Israel. For that sight of you face to face is reserved for those set free in the resurrection. And the very fathers of the New Testament too, although they saw your mysteries revealed, although they preached the secret things so revealed to them, nevertheless said that they themselves saw, but in a glass darkly, but that thing face to face is reserved to a future time when what the Apostle himself speaks of shall have come. Corinthians 13, 12 When Christ our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Colossians 3, 4 It is against that time then that vision face to face is reserved for you, of which John also speaks. Beloved, we are now the sons of God, and it does not yet appear what we shall be. We know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. 1 John 3, 2 Although then at that time our fathers saw you not as you are, face to face, although that vision is reserved against the resurrection, Yet even though they were angels who presented themselves, it is thou who commandest salvation unto Jacob. You are not only present by your own self, but by whatsoever created being you appeared. It is thou that dost command by them that which thou dost by your own self in order to the salvation of your servants. But that which they do, whom thou commandest it, is done to procure the salvation of your servants. Since then you are yourself my King and my God, 
and thou commandest salvation unto Jacob, wherefore are we suffering these things? But perhaps it is only what is past that has been described to us, but nothing of the kind is to be hoped for by us for the future. Nay, indeed, it is still to be hoped for. Through you will we winnow away our enemies. Verse 5 Our fathers then have declared to us a work that thou did in their days and in the days of old, that your hand destroyed the Gentiles, that thou cast out the peoples and planted them. Such was the past, but what is to be hereafter? Through you we shall winnow away our enemies. A time will come when all the enemies of Christians will be winnowed away like chaff, be blown like dust, and be cast off from the earth. Thus much of the future, I will not trust in my bow, even as our father did not in their sword, neither shall my sword help me. Verse 6 For you have saved us from our enemies. Verse 7 This too is spoken of the future under the figure of the past. But this is the reason that it is spoken of as if it were past, that it is as certain as if it were past. Give heed wherefore many things are expressed by the prophets as if they were past, whereas it is things future, not past facts, that are the subject of prophecy. <clears throat> For the future passion of our Lord himself was foretold, and yet it says, they pierced my hands and my feet, they told all my bones, not, they shall pierce and shall tell, they looked and stared upon me, not, they shall look and stare upon me, they parted my garments among them. It does not say they shall part them, all these things are expressed as if they were past, although they were yet to come. Because to God things to come also are certain, are as certain as if they were past. It is for this reason, in consequence of their certainty, that those things which are yet future are spoken of as if past. This is then what that we hope, for it is you have saved us from our enemies and has put them to shame that hated us. In God will we boast all the day long. Verse 8 Observe how intermingles words expressive of a future time, that you may perceive that what was spoken of before, as in past time, was foretold at future times. In God will we boast all day long, and in your name will we confess for ever. What is we shall boast? What we shall confess? That you have saved us from our enemies, that you are to give us an everlasting kingdom, that in us are to be fulfilled the words, Blessed are they that dwell in your house, they will be always praising you. Since then we have the certainty that these things are to be hereafter, and since we have heard from our fathers, that those we spoke of were in time past, what is our state at present? But now you have cast us off and put us to shame. Verse 9 You have put us to shame, not before our own consciences, but in the sight of men. For there was a time when Christians were persecuted, when in every place they were outcasts, when in every place it used to be said, he is a Christian, as if it conveyed an insult and reproach. Where then is he, our God, our King, who commands salvation unto Jacob? Where is he who did all those works 
which our fathers have told us? Where is he who is hereafter to do all those things which he revealed unto us by his Spirit? Is he changed? No. These things are done in order to understanding for the sons of Korah. For we ought to understand sometimes of the reason why he has willed we should suffer all these things in the meantime. What all things? But now you have cast us off and put us to shame, and go us not forth, O God, in our powers. We go forth to meet our enemies, and you go not forth with us. We see them, they are very strong, and we are without strength. Where is that might of thine? Where your right hand and your power? Where the sea dried up and the Egyptian pursuers? overwhelmed with the waves, where Amalek's resistance subdued by the sign of the cross. Exodus 17.12 And you, O God, go us not forth in our powers. You have turned us away backward in presence of our enemies. Verse 10 So that they are, as it were before, we behind, they are counted as conquerors, we as conquered. And they wish hate us spoiled for themselves. What did they spoil but ourselves? You have given us like sheep appointed for meat and has scattered us among the nations. Verse 11 We have been devoured by the nations. Those persons are meant who, through their sufferings, have, by process of assimilation, becomes part of the body of the Gentile world. For the Church mourns over them as other members of her body that have been devoured. You have sold your people for no price. Verse 12 For we see whom you have made over, what you have received we have not seen and there was no multitude in their jubilees. For when the Christians were flying before the pursuit of enemies who were idolaters, were there then held any congregations and jubilees to the honor of God? Were those hymns chanted in concert from the churches of God that I want to be sung in concert in time of peace? than to be sounded in a sweet accord of the brotherhood in the ears of God? You made us a reproach of our neighbors, a scorn and a derision to them that are round about us. Verse 13 You made us a similitude among the heathen. Verse 14 What is meant by a similitude? It is when men, in imprecating a curse, make a similitude of his name whom they detest. So may thou die, so may thou be punished. What a number of such reproaches were then uttered. So may thou be crucified. Even in the present day there are not wanting enemies of Christ, those very Jews themselves, against whom whensoever we defend Christ, they say unto us, So may thou die as he did. For they would not have inflicted that kind of death, had they not an intense horror of dying by such a death, or had they been able to comprehend what mystery was contained in it. When the ointment is applied to the eyes of the blind man, he does not see the eye salve in the physician's hand. For the very cross was made for the benefit even of the persecutors themselves. Hereby they were healed afterwards, and they believed in him whom they themselves had slain. You made us a similitude among the heathen, a shaking of the dead among the peoples, a shaking of the head by way of insult. They spoke with their lips, they shook the head 
this they did to the Lord, this to all his saints also, whom they were able to pursue, to lay hold of, to mock, to betray, to afflict, and to slay.